Hello and welcome to the introductory video for ENGT 4140 Soils and Foundation Design. Now I want to go through some of the highlights of the course to get you going. I know most of you, um, you know, you're going to take this totally online. You're not going to be in the classroom. So that's why I like to introduce it in a video. All right. Typically when you come into Blackboard, you're going to go to announcements. And as I post announcements, you're going to see them in this space right here. Well, also, um, I send those announcements out as emails. So let, let's read through this and talk a little bit about this course. All right. First task. Click here. That's the intro video I'm creating right now, so you don't have to worry about that. Here's a video on why invest in this course. Find out by clicking here. Watch this short clip video on when to start and finish chapter assignments and activities. And this one here is to define your academic path for the course, what you want to get out of the course. And it's all your choice. You're the learner. I'm your facilitator slash professor, and I'll do what I can. All right, now this is the course uh, description. Let me read through this. Basic principles of soil mechanics and foundation design and their applications of civil engineering. Soil topics include the identification and classification of soils, permeability, soil strengths, drainage, and frost action, compaction and stabilization, and evaluation of highway subgrades. Standard laboratory soil tests are performed to determine the physical and mechanical properties of soils. This knowledge is then applied to engineering designs such as excavation bracing, soil stabilization, geotextiles, spread footing, pile foundations, retaining walls, and earth retaining structures. And you have a prereq of CMGT 2100, and of course there's an additional fee. Now, since you're a 100% online scholar, uh, this section we're going to complete class and, and gain core knowledge in this course and what's important. You will be given assignments to reinforce what you learn, and per discussion board sessions, DBSs, you know, you're going to be able to create these little mini screen capture videos, and more about that in the course syllabus. And, of course, party grade is from exams and assignments that you do. And uh, you can read all this. This is kind of the boilerplate for the course, and it'll get you started. Now, let's go to, over here to the left, and you're going to spend a lot of time over here in the course activities and schedule. And of course you can see all the other links that are gonna apply. You don't see these down here uh, through the scholar view. Those are mine, of course, they're hidden. But you'll be able to see my grades and tools as activities are graded. Course activities and schedule, click here, and it will take you here. And the first thing off, you'll notice the course document folders are at the bottom of this web page. So if we scroll down, You'll see what I'm talking about because I have hyperlinks up here in the calendar that will take you to these different elements. So if you get lost or my link doesn't work, all you got to do is scroll on down and then pop me off an email so I can fix the link. Right here you have due dates, uh, calendar. This is kind of a link uh, to your Google Calendar. And if you read this verbiage here, it tells you, uh, you know, Google kind of pulls a little bit of the due dates, but not everything. So you got to be careful using them. Your, your true Bible, if you will, is this calendar down here on when things are posted and when things are due. I am developing this course this semester, and uh, I'm using a really good book by Doss, and, and I think you'll appreciate it as you work through it. But um, it's one of those things where, you know, you, you can see the availability and the due dates in red, and it's very important. It'll help you out. All right, let's go through here. The course schedule. In green, you'll note uh, post dates. Uh, there'll be a P with a green text. Due dates uh, will be, there'll be a D in front of it with red text. Now, as far as notes, you have all activities except exams are due at 11.59 p.m. You know, it's central time uh, in Missouri. Late activity submittal penalties apply to all activities submitted late. And as a 100% online student, professionalism is earned through discussion board sessions and assignment deadline um, sessions, assignment deadline behavior sessions. And then uh, chapter videos are used to introduce each chapter. There is a wealth of videos out there. I thought I was going to have to do an intro to all the PowerPoints, but I really don't because uh, the author has put a lot of different videos out there from different sources. And, and I pulled those and put them into my 
server, so you'll always have access to them. And anyway, you'll, you'll find that out. Activities are unavailable in Blackboard after the one day late extension runs out. I'm going to talk about that in the syllabus. Okay, here's your discussion board, your, your syllabus, goals, all these different links you can click on. And I highly encourage you to do so to learn what's in this course. Not everything's going to be available down here when we get into the schedule, because as I said, I'm developing things. So this is kind of my date to get things ready. For instance, I think I've already got, I'm, done, I'm prepared through assignment three, but I have all these others to get ready. But um, like, for instance, you see the P with assignment one, chapter one. Uh, it would be my, my target, my deadline to make sure it's ready on the 14th. And then it's posted in Blackboard and ready for you. And I have that listed on a development schedule to make sure I stay on tap and get things ready for you. So and you can see the discussion board sessions here, DVS one, on this date and your online lab one. Uh, in the course uh, description that talked about, you'd be doing labs. Well, if we were doing it in the classroom, yes, you'd be using sieves and different equipment to figure out about soil and how it works, the granular and powder and all this other stuff. But I, I've developed uh, some labs, like for instance, I have the sieve analysis for online lab one and drilling and sampling for online lab two, and I still have to work on the other line, online labs. But I, I think you'll get a lot out of those and it'll help you learn more and more about uh, soils and, and, and uh, foundation design. So don't sweat that. All right, you go down through here and you can see here's assignment number one. It's officially posted on the 15th of August. When's it due? Pretty quick. Tuesday of the next week. Now I've spaced them out better as we get into the course where you'll have two or three weeks when things are due. Like you see assignment three here is August 29th and then you have one, two, three. Uh, just a little over three weeks for assignment three. So it'll start spacing out for you and there's three weeks right there for assignment two. Assignment one's not too bad though because it's an intro chapter. You know, you can't, <laughs> who cannot get those done? Even with your other classes and, and things that you have to prioritize to get done in your other classes, you, you'll do fine. Anyway, that's that. Let's go to the syllabus. You'll note that they is a, um, there is a course syllabus in a PDF, and there's a course grade receipt. I'm going to talk about that here in a moment. Uh, but you have your soils and foundation design. Here's the layout. You're a 100% online scholar, so here you are. There's the description I just read to you. Here's all the background information uh, for the engineering tech program. And if you look through the course specific objectives, uh, we're gonna understand the formation of soils and rocks, determine the engineering properties of soil, examine the processes and results of site investigations and soil reports, classify soils based upon US uh, CS and OSHO Ashto uh, classification. Characterized concepts include consolidation settlement of structures. Apply methods of investigating the shear strength of the soil and analyze the subsurface stresses in the soil. Analyze the concepts and designing foundations based on the soil type. And of course, we're going to complete everything on time. Here's kind of the breakdown of all of that. Here's the, the headers of various chapters. Um, most of the chapters are sequential, but I skipped a few chapters there, so more about that. As you get into Doss's book, it is uh, 2024, 20, believe it or not. Uh, most of the information is already out there, so I'm able to use it to uh, prep the course for you. It's a great book, though, guys. Principles of Foundation Design. It gets a little heavy on some of the calculations and all the different things that you have to do as a civil engineering technologist uh, slash engineer if you decide to go that route beyond Central. But uh, anyway, and it's by Cengage Learning. And uh, software only, you're going to be given a screencast.com account that, well, you can sign up for it and then you'll be able to use it for doing your DBSs. More about that when I get to the uh, discussion board sessions. Class preparation, professionalism. You know, Merriam-Webster calls this uh, as a skill, good judgment, and applied behavior that's expected for a person who is trained to do a job well. Well, as an engineering technologist, uh, you're going to be showing professionalism when you get out in the work world. And that's uh, a couple of ways you do that. You attend, you, you go to work, <laughs> and you're there on time. 
and, and you follow through on all your different behaviors. In this course, uh, attendance is going to be through, you know, I, I have online chats, but it, it's going to be a discussion board sessions, and then you're going to turn them in on time. And then assignment deadline behavior, uh, two things. You turn in your assignments and you turn them in on time. And then here's more information on discussion board sessions. Um, I don't have any journal reviews or discussion for you in this course, so don't sweat that. No research paper. You're just doing the assignments. Here's kind of a breakdown of um, the one-day late policy. Like, for instance, and, and I'm not going to discuss this with you, Let's say you had an assignment due tonight, and it's due at 11.59 p.m., and that's when most of them are due, except for the assessments, as I said earlier. But uh, it's due tonight, 11.59 p.m. You turn it in, 11.59 p.m., blackboard time, not what's on your clock, what blackboard says. And when I go in to grade it and I see 11.59 p.m., you're on time. Now, blackboard is weird in that it calls it late, even though I have it set for 11.59 p.m., Go figure. But I always look at the time you submit it. So 11.59, you're on time. But let's say Blackboard reads midnight, one minute after 11.59 p.m. You're late. And the policy is that we use for engineering tech is that you have 50% of your potential points gone. You can't earn them because you're already late. Okay, but you have 24 hours to still earn that 50% of potential to turn it in. So it's like a one-day late thing. All right, if you turn it in on 11.59 p.m. or before the next day, then you could still earn up to 50%. But if you go midnight tomorrow night, then all potential points are gone. You can't earn anything. All right, this dialogue kind of discusses that. You can see I did a flow chart on it. And then uh, there's more dialogue that we use in many of our courses. Will all engineering tech professors, professors use this? No, probably not. But most will. And uh, one of the reasons why I use it is I was an industrial manager for 24, 25 years and uh, engineer, tech, technician, and various things. And um, I found that uh, the people that worked for me, if they came to work and they came to work on time, they did well. They got their promotions, they got their cost of living increases and all that good stuff. But, but uh, if a worker didn't worry about coming to work, or even calling in for that matter, or they, they came in late all the time. Well, that was a problem. And I had plenty of em employees that were in their 90-day probationary period. I just had to just let them go. They've already proven themselves unreliable. Well, in the course, I do this because this drives it home on what is important as far as professionalism. Here's uh, the rough percentage breakdown. And I say rough because I use points. And it's pure points. I don't do any weighting in the course. Like if the course was 100 points and you earn 90 out of those 100 points, that's an A, okay? But uh, roughly the percentages are test one, midterm exam, final exam, 15%. Your professionalism, that's attendance plus punctuality. In your case, in the yellow, discussion board sessions, 100% online students, plus punctuality is 25% of your course grade. As I discussed earlier, I make that high because I think it's very important to drive it home why you do things on time. Now, your online labs are going to be 10% and then other assignments, 50% of uh, what's possible. Final grading distribution, 90 to 100%. Now, I take those points and I look at the total number of points and then what you earned and you get a percentage out of that. If you earn 90%, you got an A. If you earn 89.9999, you have a B. I don't round up. I don't round down. Because it says right here, 80 to 90% is a B. 90%, that includes 90% to 100%, um, and including 100%, it's an A. Okay, and so forth. All right, I, I usually have a few students that uh, they kind of blow off the, the class. And um, at the end of the semester, they earn 89.92%. And they write me and said, can you give me... And hey, just, just round it up a little bit. And I tell them what I just told you. I don't round up. I don't round down. You earn what you earn. And that's the way life is. Um, because students, you know, I don't give you a grade. You guys earn it. You know, that's just the way it works in life. Uh, as far as online, there is, of course, fee, mask policy, and all this other stuff. You don't have to sweat. Now let's go back to the course activity and schedule. Oh, by the way, guys. If you, this is the link I installed in here. 
Now let's say uh, course activities and schedule, you click over here and it doesn't work. Well, you just exit out of the course like I'm going to do, and then you come back in, and you go to course activities and schedule, and it will refresh it to where it works, okay? Just something I had to do. It'll work uh, two or three times, and you'll be able to go to the schedule like this, but then it'll hey, screw up sometimes. All right, let's look at the discussion board, and then I'll be done talking. You'll see all the DBSs here. Number one's already available. Uh, you will need a screencast.com account and a microphone to participate in the discussion board session. So I'm going to click on it, go to the instructions, and here's the instructions on how to get your free screencast.com account. Um, and here's the updated instructions on how to do uh, your screen capture videos that you're going to, going to create. So read through that and uh, hopefully TechSmith hasn't changed anything since April of this year. All right, now step six, using the attached DBS. See it right here where my mouse is, down here at the bottom? Um, use that DBS Microsoft Word document, fill out all of the answers, you know, just type it out, and then using Launch Capture and your microphone, create a video capture session. You're gonna draw a little box around it. And just a microphone. You don't have to do a screen capture of your face like I'm doing here. You can if you want, it's your call. But uh, highlighting your thoughts on questions and answers that you found interesting in this filled out Word document. I want to be able to see in the box that you typed out the answers. But then you can ad lib, talk, uh, share what you found interesting in a one to two minute video. And then after that video is created, you upload it to screencast.com, save it there, and then you, you're able to create a URL, you know, that's the web link, and then copy that and put it back into Blackboard. That's all I need. And uh, as I say here, I do not need the Word document. I just need the video. I need to be able to click on that, watch your video, and then you earn your points. So easy peasy, right? Well, another thing here, note, if, if and this happens, I may have one student in a class of 20 that they say they can't get screencast.com to work right. Okay, ScreenPal, which was formerly Screencast-O-Matic, works good. I have an account in that, and I use it for my weekly videos. But uh, you'll be able to click on that, and you can create your videos there, and you can share your created URL from their uh, server as well, and it's free. So anyway, that's pretty straightforward. One other thing I want to show you before I totally lose you on this video is let's go to Assignment 1. I'm going to click on this. Now, you'll see, as I said, there's three three that I've got going, and they're ready. I've already got the set dates too. Assignment one's available. And this is kind of the format I use, guys. Uh, here's your instructions, you know, steps. You'll get used to this. They're all the same except they change the chapter, you know, or I'll have different videos in here, like uh, chapter one video. You just click on there. Since this is an intro chapter, you know, it's pretty easy. But you have your chapter one the PDF. I do take the uh, PowerPoint by the author, a DOS, and then I create a PDF for it for you. You can slide through it. And then you're going to possibly, you're going to see videos down here that I'll give you extra videos, supplemental videos. Some of the videos I put up here under step two, step two A, and so forth. But um, anyway, you'll see that, and then you have assignment one. Now you click on assignment one, and you'll see here's your various questions. Okay, and you're going to answer these questions like um, you're going to hear and you're going to note it. Uh, question one is budgetary constraints. Um, is it true or false? You know, and you're going to point over that. And you're going to write these things down. And then you're going to go back in here and you're going to take assignment quiz. What you got there, you're going to post. Now, one thing about it, if you haven't had me in a course before, you, this is new to you. But the questions are in the same order as the PDF document you have here. But Blackboard will sometimes, sometimes randomize the, the choices on a multiple choice, like uh, A, B, C, D. And it won't say A, B, C, D, but it'll, it'll be in a certain order. Um, sometimes it'll randomize those. So make sure when you're ready to take your answers from the PDF and put it into the official quiz for that assignment that you, you know, you're selecting the right one. Let's go here. I'm going to go ahead and start it as though I'm you. Okay, there you go. Budgetary constraints. That's what's question one, right? Well, you can see the multiple choice down here, too, because you're going to answer all your questions on the PDF or a piece of scratch paper. You don't have to print it off, but uh, or a tablet. It doesn't matter. But like if you were doing question two, geo materials, 
choose one of these, and then you're going to put it in the quiz right here uh, from the PDF, right? All that good stuff. Save and submit. Look, I already failed it. <laughs> and you just got to see the answers to those first two, didn't you? I'm not going to sweat it because it's an intro chapter. Easy points. Okay, uh, I want to show you assignment two, though. You'll note that uh, it's the same as the other one. But step one is to read the chapter. Now, it's, it's not real fun reading on some of this stuff because it's equations and they're trying to teach you what soils do in certain ways and different tests they run to see how the, test, uh, the soil is going to behave. Um, but there's also these different tests and things to figure out. So I've, I've captured all these videos that the author of the textbook supplied us and I'll put them out there for you. And then, of course, you're going to see the similar thing here. Let's uh, just click on this uh, Atterberg Limit. See, uh, there it is. And you can see I, I put it on, um, it's one of my websites. And the Atterberg Limits, Plastic Limit, and you're going to click there. And, and that's what you'll be able to do. Watch those videos, study them, and that will prep you for your assignment. Okay, guys, that, that's pretty much it on the intro. I want to thank you for signing up for the course. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to send me an email, or you can stop by my office in Grinstead 014A. I may not have an answer for you right away. I may have to look something up, but uh, that's the way it goes. All right, well, thank you for your efforts, and I will see you in the course online.